Hey y'all, welcome back to the Hack Shack. Today we're doing a quick start with the Pimeroni Badger 2040 and also including the new Badger 2040W. We'll be taking things from stock, out of box, to custom. And that even includes internet connected apps in the case of the Badger 2040W. I recently received a 2040W with accessories. It should be no surprise, still the awesome artwork. Got a battery pack with batteries, USB cable, and the lanyard. So from the front, the 2040W and the original 2040 look pretty similar. They've got the same five programmable buttons for the front and some small differences in the labeling. That same great 2.9 inch black and white e-ink display, 296 by 128 pixels is still there. The differences are much more apparent on the flip side. No edge connectors like these in the 2040. Still got battery connectors. Still have your Quest connectors. The reset button is roughly the same, but the boot select button on the 2040 is up here, whereas you use the boot select on the Pico on the 2040W. And of course it also has this wireless, which is the big deal there. When we flip them around to view from the end, that's where you see that the 2040 original one has the USB-C, but you've got the micro B on the 2040W because it's a connector type that's on the Pico. Now, when I originally started working on this video, I thought it was just going to be a 2040W specific one and just kind of focusing on the difference, which I thought the only difference would be that it had wireless. But then I started reading around at the docks, doing some research, and I saw this. This really caught my eye. And I looked into what the Pico graphics library was all about. And I was very, very excited because I learned that you no longer had to do that pain in the rear end step if you watch my first quick start to move any graphics to the badger you had to you know resize it convert it to one bit color and then you had to go through this extra step with a convert.python script to get it into a dot bin format that the badge would want to use at that current time to work with the badge mode or the image display but the new library makes it much easier and you'll see that later. So I definitely think it's worth upgrading your original 2040 because it makes it much easier to deal with the graphics. To get the latest firmware for your 2040 or 2040W, you want to head over to the Pimeroni GitHub page and look for the file. Now you want to get the one with the Badger OS, but uh, look specifically for the one you need, the 2040W like this one or the regular 2040 like this one but you want to get the one that says badger os to have the the canned examples and stuff download the file you need keep track of where it is because you'll need it in the next step on the 2040w you'll press this boot select button hold it down and then while keeping it held you'll hit reset release it and then release the boot select on the original 2040 you have the reset and boot select up here in the corner so you hold down the boot select, then you tap reset and release them both like this. If you've done this correctly, you'll get a drive that pops up on your system. And in this folder is where you can drag and drop the particular firmware that you need to upgrade your system. Just please make sure you've back up any contents of your Badger if you've previously used it because you don't want to lose that stuff. When the copy completes, the Badger should reboot on its own and it will have the new firmware. Now that you've got your firmware up to date, you're going to need to get the Thonny IDE if you haven't had it from previous experiments. So to get that, you want to head over to thonny.org and uh, download the version that's best for you. Like in this case, I'm using Windows. You download that and it's just like a normal Windows install. You know, you accept the EULA and next, 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 that kind of thing and uh, you just go through the process and install that. It takes a little bit and then when it's done, you've got it and uh, when you do that, go ahead and launch it and start it. Okay, now we're in Thonny. You should see in your left side there your local computer files and then your Badger 2040. If you don't, go to the view menu and make sure files is checked like this. Also, if you're having trouble detecting your Badger, Check out the bottom right of your screen and you'll have an option that pops up like this. It may give you a way to select a different port if it wasn't selected automatically. 
to properly detect your Badger. If your port information seems to be correct, but you're not seeing the file system on the Badger, you may need to hit the stop button up in the menu of Thani. That will stop any code that may be running because when that's happening, you won't be able to see the file system. If we check out the documentation from Pimeroni, we notice right here for the badge graphic, it references the 104 by 128 pixel non-progressive JPEG is what we need to make. So I've got GIMP fired up and I've already grabbed a image I want to use like this one here for my badge, but I'm going to create a new image in this 104 by 128 to give me an idea of what I need to fit in, right? So I select all and copy the pirate image. Then I take that and I paste it as a new layer on that new image I created that has the exact dimensions needed for the badge. And you can see that's way too big. So I use the scale layer tool to mess around and make that fit within the base layer as I want. Now this is like I want it. I'm going to go to file and export as to export this image as a JPEG. And the main thing to notice here is that we're going to select the extra options that are hidden and make sure that we uncheck progressive when we save it. Now back over in Thani, I'm going to navigate to the badge.txt on the 2040 and edit that up a little bit. And you notice you could save your image file as what it's looking for, but in this case, I'm going to rename it to the actual name of the file. Then I save it so it's properly changed on the 2040. Now I'm going to double click to make sure that I'm within the badges directory. Then I'm going to right click my new image file and say upload the badges. And that's going to push that image there. Now I should be ready to see if it worked. Back on the badger, I'm going to hit the reset button. And when that reboots, I'm going to select the badge app. And it refreshes and as you can see, our updated badge is now shown here. To create images compatible with the image app on Badger OS, they need to be 296 by 128 pixels. And they need to be JPEGs saved without progressive encoding, just like the one we created for the badge. So I created a 296 by 128 image of everyone's favorite retro YouTubers logo. And I'm going to leave it color because I'm going to show you the neat thing about the new library. Now you may get a better result if you do some pre-work, but it will convert a color image as long as you make sure it's JPEG and non-progressive. Now over back in Thani, I'm going to drill down into the image directory and I'm going to right click and upload my new retro combs image to the badger. Let's see if it shows up. Now back on the badger, we're going to navigate to the image app, select that. It's gonna refresh, we'll see the default Badger image, which is awesome. We're gonna press down and look, there we go. Even though it was in color, it's been converted and looks pretty decent. So we know that that works. Now, up until this point, both image examples I just showed are valid for both the 2040 and the 2040W. These next examples here are only for the 2040W because of its wireless capabilities. With your 2040 connected up, get back in Thani, navigate to the Wi-Fi config.py file. From there, it's pretty self-explanatory. You want to enter your SSID, your pre-shared key, and your country code. After you do that, you want to hit save and then you'll be ready to see if your wireless works. A quick way to verify your wireless settings are correct is to navigate to this NetInfo app on your Badger. It will sit there and let you know in short order if you're getting an IP and if things look to be connected okay. Once your connectivity is working, a neat built-in app is the Weather app. And you can customize it by changing the default Latin long variables there to the Latin long for your location of choice. And uh, if you're not sure where to find that, you can pick a location in Google Maps. And if you right click, it will show your long and Latin. You can take those values, plug into the weather.py file on the 2040W, save that. And then you can see updated weather in that app on your Badger. As I goofed around and played with the 2040W, the online capabilities really 
made me wonder if I could use it to pull information from Donor Drive. Now, Donor Drive is the back end system used for Extra Life, and that's a fundraising thing I've been part of for going on eight years now. And uh, some of the information you can get from the API is like your current fundraising amount. So I looked at the weather app, I made a copy of it, and I stripped out all the stuff that I didn't think I needed. And I ended up with this code that I'm scrolling through now. I'll make this code available via GitHub. It's nothing fancy, but if you want to actually scroll through it without having to look at the screen here, you can look at what it is. And um, I'll show a screenshot here of the basic output of the API with my ID number for this year. And this isn't like private information or anything, this is public. But you can see it shoots back a bunch of information there. Now I've got my code on here and I don't want to get into all the things about the, um, you know, the icon here and all, but based on what I've shown you so far in the video, and if you look at the example code, and if you look at the code for how the menu works, you'll see it kind of has a scheme that's pretty easy to follow with how you name things and it'll just kind of show up. But I'm going to select my Extra Life app here and it's going to connect out. So I've got the app running on here and as you can see right now, it's pulling back the zero amount, which is what the current amount is. The, usually the big time for most folks, the, there's a game day in November. So I've already registered. I always register at the beginning of the year, but uh, I haven't had any donations yet. So that's showing zero. But I think this would be really neat to have around to have to keep a tally on things when they start uh, coming in. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to go ahead and make the first donation of the year. I'm going to go over here and make a donation of a dollar. And then we're going to come back and refresh this and see if it updates. All right. So I headed back over to the desktop here to uh, make a one dollar donation. I uh, don't even really have my page customized for this year. No incentive set up or anything yet. So it's real basic. Usually don't start messing with it until about October. So I'm going to do my one dollar here via PayPal. And when that's done, my raised zero there in the background should change to one dollar. Hey, a dollar. All right, it works. So this ran a little longer than I hoped it would, but just wanted to make sure I shared what a little taste of what these things can do. And the example I thought was pretty cool too, to give you an idea of what you could do besides what was canned in there, even though it was a real simple program. So don't be afraid to get in there and mess around. You're not going to break it. I'm not going to say it's impossible for you to break it with code, but I think it's highly unlikely. And here's the last tip. If you think you've gotten it just in some goofed up state where it just is not acting right, there's a special UF2 file that you can get link in the description it's also referenced in the troubleshooting guide on Pimeroni's website and you go through the same process uh, as i showed earlier like you use when you're upgrading the firmware you just do that but you put the special uh, uf2 file in there and it will blow the thing away and you still have to follow up again with a firmware file and that should put you back to square one and you can uh, proceed with hacking around on the thing these are really fun if you've gotten one but you haven't messed with it yet give it a try if you're on the fence about getting one, get one. That they're just super fun either way, either with the W and the things you can do with the online functions with wireless or with both of them with sensors and things goofing around. Or of course the basic, just having a really neat nerd badge that you can wear to conferences and things like that. It's just a really neat device. So if you've made it this far, thank you so much for watching. I hope to see you again next time. Take care. Bye-bye.